Now we have our mathematical definition of the convex hull and we have such a definition that we can devise an algorithm from. So let's try to do that. For an algorithm we have to know what is our input and what is our output. In this case our input is a set of endpoints in the plane, so our set S that's a subset of R to the 2. And the output we want to have is the convex hull. How do we want to describe the convex hull? We don't want to describe it as a point set, because it's not so easy to store a point set. If we want to store all the points, it would again be an infinite amount and we cannot do that. But for us, only the boundary of the convex hull is really important. And from that, we can easily check if a point lies inside the convex hull. So what we want is a list of the vertices in clockwise order on the convex hull. This list of vertices immediately also gives us a set of directed edges that describe the boundary of the convex hull. Can you give me a property of these edges? If I give you just two points, how can you decide if the connection between them is an edge of the convex hull or not? This is our first observation. We can say that an edge between two points P and Q is an edge of the convex hull if and only if all the points of our input set lie either on the straight line between P and Q or to the right of the directed line. So in this case, since we go from left to right to Q, all the points must lie either on this line, like this point, or below it. And the same holds true for all these segments on the convex hull. This observation now gives us a nice way to find out which segments build the convex hull. We only have to take every pair of input points and check this property to all the other points lie either on this line or to the right of it. And if yes, then this is an edge of the convex hull. And with this, we can build our algorithm. This is our first algorithm for a convex hull. We are given the point set S, and we want to create an edge list that describes the convex hull in the correct order. So in the end, if we have an edge list, we want to construct a sorted list of vertices on the convex hull. In the first step, we only want to find which edges these are. So let's try to do this. We just take any pair of points and not the same points twice and we do our test for them. That means we want to test is this edge an edge of the convex hull. And for that we can use our observation. We just use a flag that says yes this is an edge of the convex hull and then we compare with all the other points. And if this flag at the end is still true, then we add the edge to the convex hull. So we take every other point and check does this point lie strictly to the right of this directed segment or does this point lie on the line. And if it's not the case, then we know that this edge cannot be a part of the convex hull, so we are set our flag to false. So this way we get all the edges that lie on the convex hull. And afterwards we only have to construct the sorters list of vertices from it. So the correctness of this algorithm follows immediately from the observation we had on the previous page. But there are a few details in this pseudocode that we should have a look at. The first thing is how do we test this? How do we test if R is strictly to the right of this directed segment. And how do we do this fast? Do you have an idea? Testing on which side of a directed line a point lies is basic linear algebra. We can simply determine the determinant of this matrix, where we have in the first row the coordinates of R, in the second the coordinates of P, and in third the coordinates of Q. 
and if the determinant of this is less than zero, then r lies strictly to the right of it. If it is exactly zero, then r lies exactly on the line. And this can be determined in constant time. The second detail that we should have a look at is how do we construct the sorted list of vertices from this edge set. We only compute the set of edges, but they are not sorted yet. So how do we do this? We can simply take an arbitrary edge from our edge set and take this as a starting point. We say this is the first edge of our convex hull. And this gives us a target vertex. And from this target vertex, we look in our set of edges, which other edge is there. There must be one outgoing edge of this vertex. And we take this as the next edge, which again gives us a target vertex from which we look for the next edge. And we do that until we completed the cycle. And the order in which we found the vertices on the way is exactly the order that we want for the description of the convex hull. This is the complete description of the algorithm that we can use to find the convex hull of a point set. But we still have to analyze the runtime of the algorithm. What are the key components for the running time here? We have two loops nested in each other. And in the end, we want to do some sorting. So to determine the runtime, we have to find out how often do we do this loop? How much time do we spend in this loop? How often do we do the nested loop? And how much time do we spend in each iteration of the nested loop? Let's try to solve this inside out. How much time do we spend inside the innermost loop? What we are doing here is testing if a point lies to the right or on a directed line segment. That we found out on the previous page using the determinant we can do in constant time or theta of one time. How often do we do this loop? We do it for every input point. If we have n input points that means we repeat it n times. So the whole red part takes us theta of n time. How much time do we need for the purple part? This is a simple assignment. This is just one simple if statement, so we can easily do this in constant time. That means the only thing that this depends on is again, how often do we run this loop? We do this for every pair of points. So if we have n points, then we do this n times n minus one times. So in total, n squared minus n times. Inside here, we need theta of n time. That means that the whole pink part takes us theta of n to the three time. How much time do we need to construct the sorted list? We could be smart and do it in a theta of n log n time with some effort. But since we already spent theta of n to the three time here, why not do it in a stupid way? We just start with any vertex for all its outgoing edges, test if they are in E. Then take the next vertex for all outgoing edges, test whether they are in E, and go on. That means n times we have to look at n edges, so we take theta of n squared time in total. So our first algorithm computes the convex hull of n points in the plane in total theta of n to the 3 time. This is not very fast. Usually the runtime we are aiming for is the order of n log n. Whenever I give you a new problem and I'd ask you, what do you think is the time that you should spend to solve this? The answer should most of the time be order of n log n. So theta of n to the three is very far away from this. But there is an even worse problem with this algorithm that I want to talk about. This problem is in the part where we are testing if a point lies strictly to the right of a directed line or not. I told you we can simply calculate the determinant of the matrix to figure it out. This sounds easy enough. In praxis, it may happen that a point lies very close to a segment between two vertices. And if you ask a computer, does this point R lie to the right or to the left of this segment from P to Q, you might get the wrong answer. And the problem is that we need floating point arithmetic for that. And computers are not very good with this. 
You can approximate it to some degree, but you still might get the wrong answer. And it can be so bad that you don't even get a convex hull at all. In this example, it can be that your computer says, well, P does not lie to the right of the segment from R to Q. And Q does not lie to the right of the segment from P to R. And then we have a problem. Because now, none of these segments will be in our convex hull. This segment will not be in the convex hull. And what we get is not even a convex hull at all. That means that the algorithm first convex hull is not robust. Robust means that you always get a feasible solution. But what we get here might not be anything that resembles a convex hull at all. So both the running time is not very good with theta of n to the 3, and it's even not robust, so we might get a wrong solution, so this is not the best algorithm that we can get at all. And in the next part we want to find a better algorithm.